In the boathouse, work continues on the covering boards, which get installed next week. Outside, a closer look at how the longer planks for Arabella's side deck are coming together. But also make sure you're following Bob Emser's channel, The Art of Boat Building, with the material from Victoria and the woodpile he's building Arabella's tender. In his latest video, he gets started on a half-hull model of the little boat that will retain the name Victoria. So, here's the deal, folks. Listen up, listen well. We're gonna take this plank here on starboard. Now we need to lift it up and over gently and put it on the port. We want to do this with as little tweaking and twerking as we can. One, two, three, start to lift. Alright, now at the ends have to go down and the top goes up. So we can move it here over. In addition to cleaning up the scarves on the bottom of the covering boards, some graving pieces were put into a few rot spots and knots. It used to be rot here, so I'm replacing it with better wood. Good wood. Ta-da!
Hi, my name is Aiden. I started working here at Arabella as an internship about three weeks ago. I started here just because I have some experience woodworking and I just want to try something different. I know nothing about boats. I still don't understand how they float. Um, I've never actually been on a boat and um, I don't plan on doing anything with boats in the future. I just like, I've worked with wood before and done things like that and I don't know, that's the main appeal to me. So right now we're just doing a test cut to test to see if the, um, the jig inside that we set up on the bandsaw is correct because we have to take that off and do it a, set it up again. And what we have to do is make like, it's a half inch cut, eight inches in on the board. Yeah, so it's just a small half inch cut here that the bandsaw will use to meet up with as it makes a feather edge along here. So that this is all that you would see on the top is just the small cut instead of an entire joint. So hello, my name's Adam and I've been volunteering here since the most recent open house and then I also helped out at the Whiskey Plank and then I've been working here somewhat consistently since then just doing a lot of planking stuff and I also made up all of the boxes that have all like the wood offcuts that we're selling. So that was like my first main project here. Before this, I've done a lot of building theater sets. I race dinghies competitively and I also race beetle cats, which are a type of wooden boat, which I rather enjoy. I'll be racing that this weekend. But in general, I just like making things and seeing things come together. I enjoy all the bits of the process, except for a few of the finishing aspects, but I've been doing those a lot recently and I'm starting to like them quite a bit more or at least know how to put up with them and keep myself entertained throughout them. This cut here needs to line up about with this mark. So line that cut up with the C and then bring this forward until the saw just barely touches that edge because we want it to go right into the feather edge. And then this jig is just made of a few Look here, there are the pieces that are cut to the other angle of the scarf. They're just made into this jig so that the angles between the two jigs are exactly the same. So it cuts out any math or error in calculation because you're taking the one piece that has to fit to one jig right to the other so that it is just automatically correct, or at least hopefully so. It is so. kind of a manufacturing process, isn't it? Like you yeah. guys are, how many do you think you've ripped off? We've like probably 50 so far. Slightly less, but still pretty close. Maybe not 50, but a lot. <laughs> we have around 50 left, 40 to 50 left. That seems pretty good to me. Yeah, you just went a little deep on the cut there. Yeah. But that's not that bad. So one problem, but that will fill with epoxy and it will never even be seen. Mm -hmm. The goal is to not do that though. What we need to get here is a 26 foot plank and we don't just have those lying around. So all of these pieces here, they add up to a few feet over because we lose some distance during the scarf, but we need to get all of these put together to create the, um, the larger plank. So these pieces, Steve went and just arranged them so that we would have, all we have to do now is just put them together because they already meet the desired length. Is that flat sawn over there? Yeah, it is. Okay. So when we're looking at these planks, if any of the ends have knots, they just get cut off when we square off the ends. And then we have this little template that we made that has both styles of scars, which we call a one and a two, just for convenience, so they would fit together. So we can line that up on our boards and see how we can miss possible knots or defects in the wood and just cut that out when we cut the scarf, which is very convenient for saving a bit of length. Some of the pieces are also flat sawn in the middle boards, but those should be covered with fuel boxes so they won't get worn heavily. So we're putting those in the middle, right along the house sides, 
so that they are more protected and unlike the quarter sawn, which would wear well, the flat sawn wouldn't wear very well. They'd make big divots in the planks. So we put them in the middle so that they're more protected. On this board, we have a big knot in the middle. So we're gonna put that facing down so it'll end up becoming the ceiling in the boat. So it will be painted over mm -hmm. versus the top of the deck here, which will be nice and clear of any defects. Yep. The same with this board. It's got a knot right here. So we're gonna flip it over so that this is the top. So we put tape on the top side of all the boards and that stays throughout the entire process so that we don't get it confused. So bring that back an inch. Yeah, we'll get rid of most of it, but this is the bad section we need to get rid of. Yeah. So make this a two. Then this is A, B, B is a two. How's your end look over there? A two, two would be better. Okay. So it can go either way. Great, this will be a one and that should be it. So one, two, one, two, one, two. No, one of the rare ones where it does that. Cool. Some of the pieces that have a little bit of a rough end or a knot or something along the lines of that, we have to take off a little bit more in the squaring process just to make it easier to work with. But if we don't, we can take off like an eighth of an inch just because it's easier to work with more board space than not. So this piece here appears to get a little bit narrower at the end. So we're going to take off almost an inch with it just so that we don't run into difficulties later with the joint not fitting up. So the way that this rig is set up is we just have two pieces of wood here that are keeping this piece in place so it doesn't wiggle or anything. So all we have to do is just insert the piece of wood in here, have it touch the backing plates, and then we just do a cut and it's already at the set angle. And we just pretty much just finicked around for a day or so, just getting all these rigs set up so that they would do the correct cuts. Do you have a number two one? Yeah, so we knew that we wanted this to be eight inches and this to be a half inch just so that it would just be easier because those are just easy numbers to work with. And we got this one just to work together. And we just messed around a bit with it and they fit together pretty nicely. And the final fit will be done once they're on the gluing benches. Yeah, we'll have to take uh, a chisel and sometimes some sandpaper and just clean it up because the bandsaw doesn't really give it a nice cut just because it's a much larger tool than this. We have to make sure the tape is always on this side so that it cuts it the proper way. Good? Yep. You go down a bit? Yep. That's good. Nice and simple.
So after that, we now have a finished scarf. That one came out real nice and smooth, and it just goes right down to a feather edge. We'll come back to that. Just scrape the bottom. The sides should be fine. Those are much easier. Oop, there goes my glove. And then last one. So I borrow that for a minute, that nice glob of epoxy. We're gonna put it right on the end. Grab the one glob. Uh, right below my nose, there's a glob on the far side away from me. Oop. I'm just going to try to get a little more of that off right here before it goes in. Great, let's clean up some joints.
Uh, it's pretty satisfying. I like seeing something actually change at the end of the day. Like, especially if all the decking and sorts, it's like those were just these giant pieces of pine a few weeks ago, and now they're like ready to go on the boat. And um, it's not like stressful. I find like school, like you just go to work and then you do the work and then you go home. And it's just not, you're not stressed about it and thinking about it all day at the, afterwards. I got a single dollop of epoxy in the middle of my shirt, and that was it. I got a lot in my hand. Good thing I still have 13 more white shirts. Um, yeah, that's it. It's an interview. First time I've been video interviewed. Is this a beetle or a cicada? Ernest, you shouldn't eat this. Beetle? Some kind of dead beetle. Or it might be like a molt. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's just some sort of beetle. <laughs>